Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Good afternoon. So a lot of us uh, study various objects on graphs, uh, and uh, so with its particles, random walkers, spins, but uh, this time we'll hear about bandits on graphs uh, from the expert Nicolo Cisabianchi. I'm also, also going to talk about uh, experts as well. So, <laughs> so this is uh, some uh, work uh, I've done uh, in recently, and uh, it's. Um, I'll, I'll start from scratch, so you will uh, not need a lot of background knowledge to understand this. So we'll be talking about sequential de sequential decisions. And uh, we will only deal with uh, non-stochastic or adversarial models. So this is the, the traditional prediction with expert advice or uh, uh, non-stochastic non bandit model. And uh, the model, and the model is, is, is very easy to specify. It's very bare bones. So you have just k actions that uh, you have to, and each one of these actions, let's say, uh, will uh, give you a loss when you select it, but you, you, can, you can't avoid it. You have to, at every time step in your sequence of decisions, you have to decide which action to pick, and you will incur a certain loss associated with your decision. So we'll assume that everything is uh, non-stochastic, so there is uh, some assignment uh, of losses to actions over time. So there's some, uh, some numbers, L-I-T, and we'll assume that these numbers are just in the unit interval for simplicity. And uh, these are, this is the loss for playing action i at time t. OK, the idea is that some unknown deterministic process has laid down this uh, sequence of losses. OK, for each time step and for each action. So this is action i ranges from 1 to k, and t is the time, which is discrete. OK? And uh, you don't know. You have no, uh, no previous knowledge about this. You have, don't have any, any, any prior about this uh, sequence, this uh, matrix of losses that are assigned to the actions. And uh, basically, the, the, the goal of uh, the player which is playing this game, is to pick, at every time step t, the player has to pick some action it in the set of actions, and uh, will incur the loss associated with that action. OK. The player will typically use a randomization to perform this choice, and the uh, at time t, the, the, the choice of uh, the action uh, i sub t of the index of the action will be based on some previ previous observations, which refer to losses of actions that have been observed. OK, so we have to make this precise, and we get to, these, to the observation, the so-called observation models. OK. So there are two very well-known um, uh, well-studied uh, observation models, which are the experts and the bandit model. So let's see. If uh, uh, at every time step uh, I pick it and observe, okay, I have two options here. So in the experts model, I observe the entire l uh, one t. LKT. I observe the entire vec vector of losses associated to, to all the actions at that time step. Okay? So I pick action I sub t and I incur the, the associated loss by get to see all the losses of, of all actions. So this is the called experts model. 
So think of uh, investing uh, in, uh, in, a, in a number of assets. Uh, you can see the performance of all the assets, not only the assets that you have invested money on. Okay? In the bandit model, I only get to observe the actual loss that I incur. Okay? So, again, Whenever I, depending on the observation model, if it's an express game, whenever I play IT, I know everything about the past. I know all past vector losses. And if I play a bandit game, when I, whenever I play IT, I will only know the uh, past uh, losses that I incurred. But I don't know anything about uh, the losses of actions that I didn't pick in the past. Okay, so here in, the, in this kind of non-stochastic uh, uh, setting where everything is... Uh, deterministic in the, in the, in the uh, let's say, apart from the internal, uh, possible internal randomization of the player, the measure of interest is regret. And this is defined by the sum over a certain number of time steps, so let's say capital T, of the loss incurred by the player minus the loss of the best action Uh, up to the same time steps. And since we are assuming that this, the player might be randomized, uh, we will put an expectation over here. Okay, so we, including the possible randomization of the player, we are interested in uh, minimizing the difference between the cumulative loss incurred by the player, which selects a certain sequence of uh, actions, and uh, the best possible, the smallest possible loss that uh, a player could have incurred by playing consistently the same action. Okay, that clear? So, actions have a bounded, uh, have a bounded loss. So, uh, clearly this, this thing, this quantity can grow at, more, at most linearly with time, because actions have constant, may have constant loss at most. So, Anything interesting can be said whether, when, when I can uh, control uh, this difference in, uh, in, uh, so that it grows uh, sublinearly with time. And there are, uh, there's a famous, there's kind of, uh, let's, let's call this quantity, by the way, let's call it uh, T for regret. And uh, we know uh, precisely up to constant factors what happens in uh, the uh, expert and the bandit model. What are the best possible regrets against any, any possible assignment of uh, losses to actions over time. So we know that in the, in the express case, the regret will go like the square root of t with the log of the number, let's call it, sorry, k, the number of experts. And uh, the best possible regret in the bandit case will also grow with the same rate as uh, respect to time, I will have a worse dependence uh, on the number of actions. This is just because I'm observing uh, one kth of the information I observe uh, in, the, in the express model. Okay, so now this is, a, this is sort of a very nice and clear picture. So we know that these rates are tight up to constants and uh, Okay, now I want, to, I want to show you some uh, model which is somehow interpolates between two, these two extremes. Okay, so I would like to do so by uh, introducing uh, an algorithm which is a, gener a generic algorithm that is able to achieve both these two regrets, these two regrets rates uh, up to logarithmic factors. So I'm willing to, to pay a little bit more here. So let me weaken this by including uh, an additional logarithmic factor. Yeah. So this is still uh, good up to logarithmic factors, we know it is just a little bit worse, but now I have a single algorithm that with a, a slight modification is able to achieve these two regrets uh, according whether it is run in the experts and in the bandit observation model. No? So this is algorithm is uh, a variant of edge of X3 and it's, it's pretty easy to explain. 
So the probability, we, we just have to specify the probability, it is going to be a randomized player, so we're going to have to specify the probability of picking an action at time t, given the past observation. Okay, so we denote by this uh, the sigma algebra induced by the past observations. So it's, it's, it's going to be something uh, obvious, something trivial in the expert model because this will be just uh, all the past vectors of losses. In the case of the bandit, what I observe uh, really depends on the outcome of my, on the realization of my random variables, of my random um, uh, selections here. Okay, so we denote this by PIT. And uh, this is going to be proportional to e to the minus eta l i t minus 1. Okay, this l hat here is uh, an estimate of uh, the, the past cumulative loss of, of each action i. So I'm going to pick action i with a probability which is uh, exponentially small in an estimate of the loss that this action suffered in all past uh, steps. So we're going to give uh, an overwhelming probability of picking the the best action according to our loss estimates, but we also give some non-vanishing uh, non probability to, of picking an action that didn't perform the best in, uh, in the past. Okay, so now what is this? So this is Li t minus 1 is simply the sum S1 to t minus 1 of uh, L i s hat, and these are instantaneous estimates of losses, and these are defined like this, equals the L i comma s divided by q i s times the indicator function of uh, uh, L i s observed. So. If the, according to the observation model, I, uh, at time s I, I do observe the loss of action i, then I will uh, estimate the loss of the action uh, using this ratio where q, I should say, what is qis? qis is simply the probability of observing that action, the loss of that action. It's a probability of uh, uh, li, uh, lis observed. Given the, the given the past. Yes. So, um, are the lit so for fixed i lit is completely unrelated over different t values t? Yes, it's it's completely unrelated. The idea here is that the idea here is that if you give me completely random arrangement assignment of losses then no matter what action I play, I will essentially make, I I will, it won't make any difference because everything is random. So this regret will be, is going to be really small. But it seems to me like in the bandit model, you, if you only know what, it seems right. like you can't, um, maybe I'm missing something. It seems like yeah, you it can't seems get it's, any information. Right, right. It's quite, uh, it's quite uh, surprising that you actually can. I will, uh, I will give you a little bit of, uh, of explanation here. Like, what would your strategy be if, for example, all of the L's are one except for one hidden one that's zero? Okay. Uh, round, all of them are one except for one is zero. And yes. I yes. Just I guess I couldn't imagine. So, so the optimum. Yes. Okay. If uh, if no, 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 no. the optimum, you only compare. You the compare to your fixed 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. If, yeah you know, if the really if there's right. one non non random zero, if the okay, yeah. one uh, non zero at random, then it's it's easy somehow because I will. So you're only you're only uh, comparing against somehow to term or. <coughs> I'm comparing, I will compare it with a fixed column of this matrix. Yeah. Right? So if there's one, just one, which is consistently non-zero loss, then sooner or later we'll sort of identify it. If it's random, it doesn't matter. So if there is some structure, I should be able to pick it up, even though I don't observe everything, even the managed model. So, okay. Yeah, but, but it's perfectly, yes. 
Uh, thanks for asking this question. So this is the the probability and right. Another question? Yes. <laughs> what is the difference between the QIS and the PIT? Okay. The, okay. Um, I'll I'll, te I'll 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 tell you in a moment. So this is the next thing. Okay. So first of all, okay. Let's see. Uh, that's okay. So QIS, for instance, we can say QIS is going to be 1. Uh, sorry. Okay, so what is the probability of observing a loss of a certain action? It's going to be 1 in the, band, in the express case because I do observe everything by definition. It's going to be the same probability of picking that action because in the bandit model, in the bandit model, because there I only see what I pick. Okay, so here we have, uh, and another thing, uh, and now you, you can see that this definition is clearly gives you the expectation for any fixed uh, I S the expectation of uh, now I should say should write S minus one. This is going to be exactly the correct because I'm dividing. I'm putting uh, here this um, this uh, indicator function, and when I take the expectation for a fixed I, then uh, this the, this will be the probability of observing the loss, which is exactly this, and will cancel. So I get an unbiased estimate of that. All right, so. Uh, now I, so now you see that this is a, now, now you see, okay, this is a, a, a very um, specific observation, I mean, th these are two specific observation models, right? I, I, I observe everything or just observe what I, what I pick. In general, you might be uh, willing to run this algorithm with using different observation models, okay? And uh, I will, uh, where do you get these observation models? For instance, you might get observation models from uh, 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 graphical information associated with the actions. So I'll come, I'll come to that in a minute, but first let me just say two words about, a few words about the, the analysis of this algorithm. Okay, so how, go, how do I go about proving something uh, like, like that for this algorithm here. So essentially, I want, the, the proof is actually quite short, but I don't want to, uh, to spend uh, most of my time on it. So I will just tell you that um, uh, analysis, okay. So the, the, key of the, the key to the analysis is to look at, first of all, the, uh, these uh, weights here, which are the weights assigned to actions, okay, the, the, uh, these weights, when I normalize them, will get me the probabilities with which I pick actions here, okay? And then I look at uh, the sum of weights at a certain time step, and then I look at the ratio between uh, uh, let's say uh, um, normalization, these are the no normalization uh, factors of uh, these weights, which get me the probability. And I look at the evolution over time of this quantity over here. This is a kind of potential function that allows me to uh, analyze the, uh, the, the evolution, uh, let's say, effectively gets me a way of controlling this, this notion of regret. <coughs> so I will give you just uh, uh, some, uh, some little hint about the analysis. So what you can prove determini deterministically deterministically I mean uh, consider any realization of the random choices of the algorithm as, uh, as uh, given by these probabilities. So the algorithm is playing according to these probabilities and it will have a certain realization of uh, of actions that are selected up to time t. Okay. Now I want to tell you something about uh, this, 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 this sequence of actions. So it's, it's not really easy to prove uh, something like this. Sum over time, sum over actions. 
of P i t L i t hat smaller than equal than the cumulative estimated loss of any action t and I will be interested in the index of the best action for the horizon I'm looking at because so k will be little k let's call it j j will be the index of the action achieving this, this minimum over here okay and then I can plus so this is basically a very simple algebraic manipulation of the um, of the of of this quantity here summed over time and i'm just using a, 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 a very easy second order taylor expansion in order to linearize the uh, the exponential function over there and very little less so it's basically algebraic manipulation and i get to okay okay so this is a sort of a basic equation which i which i get which i get to very easily starting just from uh, the analysis of this quantity here and this holds deterministically for any sequence of uh, of actions for the by the player and uh, it's at the basis of all analysis of these exponential weighted algorithms so now what i can do i can take expectation with respect to the uh, random with respect to the um, um, distribution of these random variables i know the distribution is this and uh, so i i already know that the uh, these are unbiased estimates of losses and i, I can also very easily see that the uh, second moments of these estimates are easily controlled by by this uh, one over s can you read over there? Still OK. So, so basically, uh, just because the definition of the, it's very easy to see, because of the boundedness of the loss, because of the definition of the lost estimates, I can prove, sorry, this is going to be an inequality. I can prove this. OK, now if I take expectation here, I'm using uh, the unbiasedness and that inequality here, what I get is, is the following. Okay, so I still have an uh, expectation here because these are random variables. Okay, P i t L i t. So the hats go away because estimates are unbiased. And also hats go away. This is a sum of losses. So just by linearity, the hats go away. Uh, this is a J and this is, sorry, capital T. Okay, this is a constant, and I have something here. Okay, I made a mistake here. Uh, probably I had a PIT, which I forgot here. Okay, and uh, so what I get here is PIT divided by QIT. Okay, and this is also a random quantity because this, these are uh, determined, uh, are, are random uh, uh, functions of uh, past observations in general. Okay, now, good. Okay, now uh, here is just, this is just uh, the cumulative performance of uh, the player. So this is the average, this is the average loss of the player which is playing uh, according to this probability distribution. And this is summed over time. So this is like, like uh, the cumulative loss of the player. We can call it L sub i. OK, is this quantity over here. And uh, this is the, we can just pick j to be the loss of the best action in the time horizon. So I get min j L j t. I just pick the best one. Then I have ln k over eta. And then it's very easy to get to see here what happens. I have, when in the express model, q is 1. So here I have a sum of probabilities. So this is 1. I have a sum of probabilities, which is 1. And I have sum over time. So this quantity here becomes eta halves t in the express case, where t is the horizon I'm summing up. And in the bandit case, well, Q is P, P 
over p is 1, so I get n eta halves t k, because I'm summing uh, 1 k, k times, which is the number of actions. Okay? Now, by picking eta in order to trade off these two terms, expert cases, so this is again expert, and this is again the bandit, I exactly get these two bounds over here. Okay? Good. So now, this is the first part of the story. So now, again, I would like to, to play a little bit with this observation model. So uh, what, what, suppose now that the actions have uh, similarities. So again, suppose that there is uh, like, uh, so my actions are maybe like this. So there is some graph. Huh? So these are my k actions, and there are some similarities among them. So the edges of the graph indicate similarities between actions. So maybe, you no, know, I actions are uh, ads that I display on some uh, web page. And whenever I put an ad, and uh, I get some information about the, 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 uh, the, the revenue that, that that add got of the, the click-through probability, I will also know that similar ads would have gotten a, a similar uh, loss or similar gain. Okay, so now I, I, I can, may assume that whenever I play a certain action, suppose now that I play this action over here, okay, this is IT. Now I only get to see I don't see everything. I see a little bit more than what I actually played. I also see the losses of actions that are in the neighborhood of the, the action I picked. Okay? So, Your example and many others, it seems more reasonable that I get maybe my loss exactly, but adjacent losses in some, I have some. I could noise. have a, like a, 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 a random, a random. Uh, uh, a random signal that is, uh, yes, that's correct, but this is a, 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 st a st statistic free talk. So I won't, ha I don't have any, I won't have any randomization in the model. Okay? But definitely is true. Indeed, we have examples of, of, of that, but that's just, you know, as, as a philosophy of this talk, let me. Okay, so now it's kind of easy to, okay, of course, this generalizes uh, both models, no? So in the Esper's case, we have a click. Everything uh, I pick gets, a, gets me to see uh, everything else. OK. OK. So the neighborhood is the of every node is the entire graph. OK. In the bandit case, I have uh, an empty graph. OK. Whenever I don't have any edges, so whenever I pick something, I only get to see that. In general, we, I can have anything in, in between. So now the question is, how should the I'm, I expect to see some scaling here that interpolates between the two. Okay, so what kind of scaling should we expect here? Yes? Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily. I can comment about it. Let's, for the sake of concreteness, uh, we can assume that uh, for now that the graph is fixed and, and maybe unknown. No, you don't know it at the beginning. Okay. So how do you go about playing this game? Okay, playing this game, you just you don't, don't do any. The algorithm is, is good, so you just use this algorithm. You can, what, what is now QIT? So QIT is the probability, I, I recall it, the probability of uh, observing, uh, observing LIT given the past. And this is going to be equal to the probability of picking that particular guy plus the sum of all the J in the neighborhood of the guy of the probability of picking. Uh, of picking them. So I will observe uh, the loss of this e if either I pick this or if I pick any action in the neighborhood of this guy here. Okay? So now, excellent. So we, we, are, we are basically done in the sense that all it's, all it's left to do, uh, all it's left to do is to study this quantity here. Because this quantity will determine the, uh, the, re the final regret. Okay, so how does this quantity, because, you know, we, we had two easy cases. In, in bandit experts were easy, no work. You just put P and simplify, or you put one and sum. 
nothing to do. But in general, if you have a general observation model, then it, you, you, you'll have a little work to do. No? So let's see how the, it looks like. So we have a, let's look at one of these guys, so just for a, for a specific t, so I can drop the index. So I have pi divided by pi plus sum, and this is summed over i, sum over j in neighborhood of i of pj. And p1, pk is a probability assignment over the vertices of the graph. Okay, so now how big can this be? How can I? So one way to look at this is to take the counting measure just as, as a sake, for the sake of, uh, of uh, clarity. If I put the counting measure there, I get something uh, completely combinatorial. And uh, this is 1 divided, so it's 1 over k, and I just simplify the k throughout. And I get just the, sorry, the size of the neighborhood. Okay, this is a, okay. So give me any graph, uh, unoriented graph. And uh, what is the sum of the reciprocal of the uh, neighbor of, of, of the degrees plus 1? Okay. Okay. So this is a, a, a well-known result. So this result is, and this, they tell you that it's upper bounded by the independence number of the graph. So it's the largest subset of the vertices of the graph, such that such that no two vertices in this subset have uh, an edge in common. Okay. This corresponds to. Particular algorithm where you label. Things yeah. So form. how do you prove these things? This is actually easy and fun to prove. So uh, let let's start uh, from. Uh, we start from uh, from. Uh, okay. Give me any graph, and uh, let's prove this upper bound over here. So what I do is I let's call Q zero this quantity here. I one over one plus n i. Okay, and now let me get uh, I0 is going to be the uh, vertex which has the smallest uh, neighborhood. Okay, now I am uh, splitting the sum, Q0, I'm splitting it at the sum over, okay, uh, let, me, uh, let me do like this. Let me consider, I want to consider the graph i0, and I want to cut a hole in the graph, so I want to take out uh, i0 and uh, the neighborhood of i0. So I cut this out from the graph, i0, the neighborhood, and all the dangling edges, okay? And now the sum is split uh, in two parts, so what is left, I call it q1, q1 is what is left of q0 in this sum when I took away i0 and all the vertices in the neighborhood plus what I took away, which is I, uh, I0 union uh, uh, n, let's say I0, let me get this right, okay, so I sum over j, okay, and I sum 1 over 1 plus size of nj, okay, so by can you see if I write down here? No. no. Okay, so this is a forbidden area. Uh, it is a no, no fly zone. Maybe I'll write down here. Maybe I'll write down here. Okay. So what happens now? So you see that this is a kind of unfortunate. So let's look at the quantity here. So this quantity here, sorry, I wasn't planning. So this quantity here is going to be, okay, this guy, I0 is the one with the smallest neighborhood, and it's in the sum. So I can replace every term of this sum with uh, the term, the corresponding term with I0, because it has the smallest denominator, so it's the largest term. So I have sum over J in uh, I0 union neighborhood of I0. Okay, and then I have 1 divided 1 plus size of the neighborhood of I0. Okay, 
So now you see that I have a, a, a constant here. So this term is just equal, this sum is just equal to 1, because I, I summing exactly this neighborhood of i0 plus 1 terms that are all constants equal to the 1 over 1 plus neighbor, size of neighborhood i0. Okay, so now I know that this is at most qi plus 1. Okay, so this is q1, sorry, q1 plus 1. So I, um, and now I recurse on the remaining graph. So I take again the, the i with the smallest degree in the remaining graph, in the graph with the whole, I take it out, and I, again, I can write that this is at most, uh, what is left, uh, plus 2. Okay, how many times can I take out, uh, can, I, can I repeat this process? I take out the vertex and all the neighbors. Okay? I can do it exactly at most in the independence number of the graph. Because this is the largest number of edges that the, of vertices that the largest subset of vertices that won't have uh, that I won't remove when I remove any of them. Some sense. Okay? Did you get see this? So, yes. I'm sorry, you, you finished the yes. so one Alternative is, I mean, one standard way to pick an independent set is just label the graph with independent uniform variables and take those uh, vertices that have a mac, that are local maxima, that are bigger than all their neighbors. And when you do that, the expected size is exactly... Yeah, there are many, uh, there are many ways. So that gives you... There are many ways to, of doing it. Yeah, many... But just the randomization gives it to you immediately this inequality because the expected size of the... if you. Label we okay. I, I was planning to use this proof uh, a couple of other times, uh, so that's why I'm using this specific. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are, uh, yes, so yes, yes, different, different ones. Okay, so this proof is for the counting measure, but you can generalize it for any arbitrary measure of the graph. Okay, so now this gets you something which is uh, will get you this quantity now will be bounded by the independence number, and uh, now in the, the regret, the proof will immediately give you that you regret we scale like t alpha ln k. And uh, you may immediately see that in the case of the click, the independence number is 1. So this is 1, and I recover the express bound. In the case of the, uh, the, the empty graph, the independence number is the number of vertices, because I don't, everything, everybody is independent of each other. So I have a, I get a, I'll get a k here, which is the upper bound for the bandit. So this is uh, nicely interpolates between the two. Okay. Now, in the remaining time, I, I want to take a look at a different, uh, a more general situation, which is uh, okay. Which is what happens when I have directions on the graph. So this can very well be, no, because uh, in in uh, so just assume that um, you have uh, a situation in which you know. You know, it's like uh, the example I make usually is this, uh, you, you're going to buy a, a game console and uh, you get a recommendation for buying a, a, like a high definition cable. Okay, so if you're interested in a game console, it's likely that you'll, you'll need a high definition cable in order to uh, view, it, view the games very uh, nicely. Uh, the other way around is less likely. If you buy a high definition cable, maybe you don't have a, a video console. You have some, some other needs, okay. So th there, there are, there are Directions now and directions or core of course are uh, reducing uh, further the information that you get. Okay, now in, in which sense? What is the observation model here? The observation model is that whenever I pick some action, I only observing uh, the losses of the actions in the out uh, in the out neighborhood. So. I am serving the loss of the action I pick and of all the uh, actions that uh, are pointed to by uh, edges of the actions I pick. Okay? So I won't see this anymore because the edge is pointing in the wrong direction. Okay? So uh, now the I can write again, I can just, uh, okay, I can just uh, revise this definition here. Now, the probability of observing a loss is just, you can just put a notation here, it's just the sum, so it's the probability of picking that action 
plus the sum of the probability of picking actions that are in the in the neighborhood of the so the what is the probability of certain this loss either i pick this or i pick any action that has an edge pointing to me okay so this is now i have reduced the information and um, i would like to know how how what, what's the correct regret rate so by the way in the in the, in the previous case, uh, where we saw that the regret was scaling with independence number of graph, uh, we, that's, that's tight for any graph. So for any graph, you can provide a, a matching lower bound for the, band, for the game played it on that graph that corresponds to the, to the independence number. OK, so that's, that's a sort of a variant of the standard band proof. OK, so let's see. Um, how do I do this? Uh, first of all, I'm hoping, okay, maybe, you know, I can still prove something like that, where here I just put something bigger, which is, uh, sorry, something smaller, which is the inner neighborhood. However, there is a counterexample that uh, rules out the possibility of getting exactly the same, the same kind of behavior. Okay, so I can. So let's see, I, if I have a, a directed graph like this, it's a total order. Okay, so actions, and now I have edges like this, and I have k actions, so a total order over k actions. And now I have a, um, a probability assignment of, which is exponentially small on the, um, so let's say we number things one, two, up to k, and then I have probability i is 2 to the minus i. So I have a very small probability of uh, picking an action that observes, that gives me the total visibility. Okay? So if I pick this action, I observe the loss of everybody else. It's like in the expert's case. If I pick this action, I only observe the, 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 the loss of this, of this specific action. It's like the bandit. Okay? So if, if I have this bad the probability assignment, it's easy to see that the um, this sum over here, so there sum uh, i one to k p i t p i this p i over q i. This is going to be uh, k plus k minus one divided k plus one divided by two, I believe. And uh, but if I look. At the this is a in the, in the if I drop the orientation of the edges I get a click, okay. So the independence number of the edge without the orientation is one, but this quantity here is bounded by something linear in the number of the edges. So I cannot hope in general unless I make any 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 anything any some assumption I can hope to bound the um, the same quantity ahead here, now restricted on the on the in neighborhood with the independence number of the graph, uh, dropping the orientation of the edges. OK? So the problem, so the problem here is that, well, well one, might, one could blame uh, several uh, you know, components, several ingredients of the system. So uh, one might decide to blame uh, the fact that I have a, a bi uh, too high variance in my loss estimates. So one way to reduce the variance in the lost estimates is to introduce bias. So an easy fix to this problem here is to change it, to alter a little bit my loss estimates. So my lost estimates now will be tailored to the fact that I, my graph has orientation. So I can expect uh, situations like that where my standard estimates won't work. So now I do uh, biased, biased loss estimates. This bias lost estimates, so let me just use the same notation, will be just uh, uh, the same as before. L i t divided by q i t indicator function of L i t observed. But now I will add a little bit of, uh, of bias down there. OK, in order to keep those things down. So now I'm underestimating the, the true losses. This is a, a negative bias. 
but I can control the variance uh, in, uh, in a good way. So essentially, if I redo the proof I did uh, before uh, for, for the original estimate, I get something very similar. So I get that once I take expectation, the regret, that quantity over here, if I use these estimates here, is bounded by something like this. plus gamma, and then I have the, this same, sorry, I have the expectation here. I'm almost done. And then I have the lit um, hat squared pit. Okay, so the only difference here is that I have, um, okay, let me write this uh, actually as it should be. So P i comma t divided by Q i t plus gamma. Okay, so you get a very similar uh, relationship that controls a very similar quantity controlling the regret in this previous case. I have to deal with this gamma here. Okay, and uh, you see here gamma is playing uh, essentially the same role as zeta, which is the, the one I had in the, the, the parameter I had in the exponent of my, for my, pro my probabilities. And uh, although here, I, I, I should find a way of uh, dealing with this quantity here. So, okay. So now, in, uh, uh, I can prove For, uh, in, in, for any, any choice of gamma, I can upper bound this with something which is, uh, again, the um, twice the independence number of the graph plus a logarithmic factor, which depends on several things, including uh, gamma, of course, and, and alpha. Okay. So... You see here that the, um, the, price, the price I pay in order to, well, I, I, I can still control this quantity here in terms of the independence number as I did before, but having a, just an additional logarithmic factor which will depend, by, which will depend on the, this uh, gamma term, this bias term here I have introduced. So, the way this can be proven, it's also interesting. I would like to show it to you, and I think I have the time. It's, it's not going to be long. And again, I will make a proof uh, for the counting measure. The proof for the counting measure is kind of silly, because uh, if I know that I have a uniform measure, I know, I know that I, these things are ruled out. So I'm kind of... But this is essentially the essence of the proof is already there. And then by introducing uh, this uh, bias term, I can, I'm, a, I'm able to generalize the proof to arbitrary measures over the, the graph, okay? Because this gives me enough control on the, on the denominator. Okay, let, so let's see this proof. So I want to, it's again, it's, it's, it's completely combinatorial question. I have an oriented graph, a directed graph, and uh, I want to control, if you can find things, Okay, I want to control the sum over all the vertices over 1, 1, 1 over 1 plus the size of the in neighborhoods of these vertices. Okay, so this is the, it's like that, gamma zero, uniform measure. And then there is a sort of a technicalities to generalize it in order to get this upper bound here. So how do I prove this? Yes, you're right. I just <laughs> didn't write inequality. So the inequality will look like this. So it's again, without uh, the, if the graph, if I drop orientation, I have a neighborhood, I just know, I know that it's alpha. If I have orientation and I just consider the in neighborhood, then I have twice alpha uh, times a log factor here. Okay. So, now let's see how the proof goes. Okay, now I'm going to 
again, I'm going to pick a sequence of vertices as before. So I'm going to take out the i0, which is the vert, this time is the one with the largest in neighborhood. Uh, that's correct, yes. Uh, take i0 out and uh, recurse on what's left. Okay, so I'm just taking a, ver a vertex out, all the edges, not the neighborhood, just the vertex. Okay, so it's again as before, but now I just take out these guys, this guy here, and I left the neighborhood uh, intact. Okay, and uh, all right, so let's see, let's uh, reason a little bit about, uh, about this. So now I want to take, I want to relate, I want to relate this with the, with the uh, independence number of, of the graph without orientation on the edges, without directions on the edges. So this is the maximum, so definitely this is going to be bigger than the average. Okay, just because I, I just I picked the maximum. Okay, so the average equals to the number of edges uh, divided by k. Sorry, this the sum here equals to the number of edges because I'm counting. Uh, I'm not counting twice because I have directions. I'm only counting in. So if I sum over all vertices, I just get the cardinality of the number of edges divided by k. Now drop orientations. If you drop orientations, you, you might, instead of counting twice this guy, guy, you just count it once, but this will only reduce the number of edges. So I'm still going in the right direction in this chain of inequalities. So now pretend of dropping all orientations at this stage. And then you use uh, what uh, Turan's theorem. Turan's theorem uh, relates the density of uh, an arbitrary um, Undirected graph with the independence number. And this gets you exactly k divided by two independence number of the graph minus a half. It's, it's, it usually it's not written this way, but I just wrote it for convenience like this. Okay. So now, now I can uh, essentially uh, do a write a recurrence as I, as I wrote before. And this is going to be, I'm looking at my quantity of interest here, so this quantity here. I can split now in two parts. So the part that I have there, which is, uh, so this is going to be at most, okay, at most because this is smaller. This is going to be at most uh, um, 1 over 1 plus neighborhood of I0 plus the rest, I different I0, 1 plus 1 plus 9, okay. It's not minus 1, this is a minus. Okay, so now just plug that in and I just plug this uh, lower bound on uh, the size of the inner neighborhood of I0 and that gets me an upper bound because I have it a denominator and this is alpha plus k and then I have the same thing over here. Okay, now I, I recurse and I just took out one vertex from the graph. So I have a new graph there with the smaller number of edges, a smaller number of vertices and I keep going. So I pick again at the, the, the vertex with the largest uh, in neighborhood, I take it out and I keep on going like this. So at the end I, what I have is that the, the quantity over here, I'm writing like this, so I have sum over i, 1 over 1 plus and i minus, is more than equal than sum over i, 2 alpha a k, uh, i, uh, k to 1, I believe. So the first time I have k vertices, the second time I will have k minus 1, and I go down to that, okay? So I just get 
to alpha, and then I sum this uh, harmonic sum over here, and then I get exactly uh, at most 1 minus 1 over k alpha. Okay? So essentially, uh, right, and then I can take this proof, generalize it a bit in order to uh, get a control of this term, which will uh, include, will be a little more sloppy, a little more loose. I have a k squared and, uh, and everything, but I can deal with, I can handle arbitrary probability assignments. Okay, now if I just uh, tune eta properly, tune eta and gamma properly, and uh, the tuning of eta and gamma will be the same, I can get a bound which is exactly, which is the same form of the regret bound I had before. So again, it will depend, it, it will de again depend on the on the but on the uh, independence number but I will have additional uh, uh, additional log terms uh, log factors uh, that will be uh, len k and also len t because uh, gamma will be tuned in terms uh, of uh, 1 over t 1 over square root of t so this is uh, so essentially even in the undirected case I can uh, still get a control on the regret for arbitrary directed graphs by using two tricks, by using essentially just one simple trick, which is adding a little bias to the sum. And uh, then uh, with the proper uh, control on this, uh, on this quantity, which is really the key quantity that rules the regret here. And essentially get the same result with just uh, ad additional love factors. So this is basically the message. So, so this is, I found uh, this interesting because it gives a sort of a nice way of blending between uh, the, the experts and the, and, the, and the bandit model. Yes? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. So in the directed graph model, we could uh, draw the self loops, the little edges pointing to myself explicitly, right? Just in the mm -hmm. picture. And I could also omit some of them. So would that break the proof? If I don't point to myself, yes. So where can you point? I assume it will. Can you point if it's disconnected, the, you mean? No, I, I just don't have a loop. I don't reveal don't my own loss. Everybody has a, at least one incoming edge, but it's not no. from myself. No, if you don't see your own loss, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, show me where it breaks. Though. Point to the uh, well, uh, uh, well, there's a this is a there's a lower bound uh, in which you have a, a, a worse dependence on the on time t to t to the two thirds. It's sort of a revealing game. So you play a good action, but you don't see it. In order to see uh, something, you have to play a bad action. No, I knew this, but I, but I, you, I thought it I, proved to be that I knew wrong. So where, can you show me where the proof breaks down? Where the proof breaks down? Uh, so his, his Q's are always no. bigger than P's. The Q will always include a P. This is, this is a... This is so if I can if I promise that Q is bigger than so you don't have a one here. This is what you mean. You don't always have a one down there, which means that you don't always observe. Yes, that that's that's pretty crucial to it. I mean, I don't. If I promise that Q is always bigger than P, it's okay. Well, there's a minus one half there. That seems like it might be where. Oh, uh, okay. Q is always bigger than P. If Q is always bigger than P, yes, because I'm. I'm a face safe uh, to the bandit uh, situation. That's correct. Okay. So I don't need an edge to myself. If, if you can always ensure that the probability of serving a loss is always at least as big as probability of picking the action that corresponded to, to, to that loss, then it should be okay. Yeah. But that would be hard to guarantee. Specifically, there's one really great guy whose probability shoots up, and, and that's it. Then you're done. Then he is not. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's. I mean, all these uh, arguments uh, don't don't assume anything about uh, the probabilities. This, this, all these things hold for. I mean, all the combinatorial stuff holds for any probability assignment. So it doesn't matter what argument I run. Okay. So this is something that if you start assuming something about the behavior of the probabilities of the algorithm, then it gets really, uh, tri really, really tricky. So you may also imagine an alternative observation models in which you basically. You know, what you observe depend, really depends uh, maybe on uh, 
uh, on the realized loss. So if you if you pick an action and you ha that action has zero loss, you don't observe anything. But if your action has a big loss, then you get to, to see something else. So you may also, I mean, there's sort of a, and, and, and these uh, this graphs don't have to be fixed, as I said at the beginning. You actually don't need to know the graph in advance. So suppose these graphs are varying over time. Then instead of having a dependence on the, the, uh, on the constant, on the constant uh, instead of having a dependence on t alpha, we'll have dependence on sum over t alpha t, <coughs> or on the sum of the, OK, square root, square root, on the sum of the um, independence numbers of the sequence of graphs. So, so I can have the observation model changing over time. I don't need to see it beforehand. Beforehand, I just need uh, my probabilities won't depend on the observation model. So I can pick it blindly. And then someone tells you, OK, actually, this is what you observe. And I don't, need to, I don't even need to observe the entire graph in order to update my probabilities. In order to run the algorithm, I just need to observe the, the graph up to the uh, second neighborhood of the action I picked. Because I need to update the probabilities for all actions uh, uh, whose loss I know. And this is, is up to. So I need to know the probability of picking. So if I pick this guy, I, need, I will observe the loss of this guy. And I need that to calculate the probability of observing this loss, which is a function of the neighborhood of this guy. So I need to, need, I need to know some vicinity of the graph of the action I picked, but not the entire graph. OK, I'm done. OK, thanks for your attention and patience. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.